What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek. And today we're talking about Power Automate, we're talking about expressions, and we're going to talk about the start of day function in the date and time function collections. So start of day allows you to pass in a, uh, a timestamp, a string, uh, and what it will do is it will calculate the starting time of that day. So we'll reset it back to midnight of the day in question or so on, you know. That, that little gap there between sort of, um, you know, midnight the previous day and start of the next day, it'll set it to midnight that day. So let's take a look at it. I'm in Power Automate here. I've got a manual trigger flow here and I have a compose action. So if I click into the compose action, I can go across to expressions, scroll down, and I can expand the date and time so I can see more. Scroll down until we get to start of day. Now we can see that it's asking for two parameters. It's asking for a timestamp and it's asking for a format. The description says it returns the start of a day to a string timestamp passed in. So what I'm saying is when we pass a timestamp stamp in, so any um, any day that it's, it's getting, um, it will um, pass that in and then we can output the um, we can output the string uh, as the start of that day. Um, and then we also have this option for formatting as well. Um, now it doesn't say, usually um, if something's optional, it has a question mark at the end of it. Um, the formatting is actually optional, it's not required. So we'll click uh, start of day, and we'll go into there, uh, and then we need a timestamp to pass in. So I'm just going to use UTC now. Um, now you can get this timestamp from anywhere, it could be a record on your uh, CDS instance, it could be a record uh, or a column in your um, SharePoint database or your SQL database. It doesn't really matter where, as long as it's um, as long as it's a timestamp. Um, and then, as I said, the, the formatting is optional, so we're just going to leave it there for now. Uh, but we'll click OK, and we'll go into there, and we'll test this. So I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. Run the flow, click done, run successfully. So, we can see this output here, uh, this timestamp. So um, today's date is the 11th of February, 2020. This is where I'm recording it. And it's reset it back to midnight um, today. So midnight yesterday or like, you know, 12 o'clock uh, in the morning, today's date, um, however you kind of phrase that. Um, it's basically reset it to the start of this day. Um, so, and it's output in this, this sort of UTC format where we've got the year, the month, the day, the T, and then the hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, and Z for Zulu at the end. Now, we can actually format this if we want to. So if you watch any of my previous videos on formatting um, times and things like that, you'll know that uh, Microsoft Flow uh, will conform to the ISO uh, 8601 standard, meaning that if you put a, uh, a certain um, format in there, it will convert it to those. So let's take a look at that. So if we just uh, go back to the flow, um, we can put a comma in here to get into the formatting. And in here, it does actually have the question mark. Um, so it is actually saying it's an optional, um, it's an optional parameter, it's not a required parameter. And what we'll the actual description says uh, of the parameters below. Um, then we can put something in here. So if I just put um, a single quotation mark, and then we'll use the string, we'll use the format D. So again, if you look up the ISO 8601 standard, there's multiple ways to format dates, uh, dates and times. Um, as long as you put one of those formats in, it should work with Microsoft Flow. Uh, it may not support all of them at the moment, but it supports the majority of the ones that are tested. Um, so if you follow that standard, uh, that's the way it'll work. I'll put a link to the ISO standard in the description box so you can look up a different way to format your dates and times. So we'll click update. Uh, and we'll hover over and it has updated. So we'll run the test again. Save and test, run the flow, click OK. And then we can see it's output like this. So we no longer have those uh, dates and times. So this particular one's not that useful. Um, but you can see that we can format this in a different way. So it's formatted it into an American style format where we have the month, the day, and the year. So uh, what do you guys think about the start of day function? Um, I think this will be particularly useful for things where you have to calculate um, sort of times uh, between certain days 
um, to make sure you, you don't fall out of SLAs and make sure you don't do certain other things, especially like transporting maybe fresh goods and things like that. It has to be there within a day and not just any time of the day. There may be certain restrictions around that. Uh, but as always, I want to know what your use cases for this is. So let me know in the comments down below. Or uh, if you look at the last slide on this video, you can see all my contact details. You can contact me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, um, or send me an email if you really want to. Um, and uh, let me know what is you use this for. Uh, if you did like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.